Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. This is the series where I present to you a team and if you follow these instructions, you'll hopefully finish top 5% globally, so you'll do very well in your mini league, possibly even win it. This series is the whole reason I started this channel. So the idea is I will show you some players. You have a choice of which players to get, but I'll hopefully stop you getting any duffers. So you can still feel like you're choosing your team. I'm just guiding you a little bit if you want to think it like that. So in this video, what I'll do is I'll go through game week 16, how people who did the system got on. And then we've effectively got a wild card for game week 17. So I'll be showing you which players to choose. And or rather, I'll be giving you a selection of players to choose from. And then you make your choice. So let's look at game week 16, which was a very long time ago. We start with game week 16 bankers. Everybody had these players. That was Ward, Martinelli and Haaland. Seemed ages ago, by the way. <laughs> so Ward was on the bench. Forget about him. Martinelli got six. Haaland got one. We had Haaland as the captain, so he got you two points. So the bankers got a very disappointing eight points. The keeper, you'd have had Ramsdale or Pope. They got six and five, so an average of five and a half, which other keeper you had. The defenders, you'd have, you would have had at least two of these, possibly three. That's Robertson, Cancelo, Perisic, Trippier. They scored 9-1-1-7, so an average of nine points for the two defenders here. Three midfielders, you would have had three of these. Anthony, Bowen, Foden, Madison, Saka, Zaha. Anthony didn't play. And you got 2, 9, 6, 3, 0. So I was reckoning an average of 12 for these. If you had Anthony, then of course somebody would have come off your sub bench. But the subs weren't very good for game week 16. You'd have had two of these forwards. Jesus, Calvert-Lewin, Wilson, Solanke. They got 2, nothing, 1, 5. So again, Calvert-Lewin didn't play. That's someone off your bench comes in for him. So then you got an average of 4. For whichever two you got so that wasn't so good either but game week 16 was low scoring across the board so it's kind of all right the bench was also hopeless you'd have had three of these on your bench so a, a very bad bench compared to normal the global average was 43 points and the minimum if you were following this was only 23 the average 38 and a half the maximum was 55 but the three teams that i know are following this they all scored above the global average. The minimum was about 49, I think. So they actually did all right. Thank you very much for my subscribers. I have to keep putting this in here because I keep forgetting to say like and subscribe. Uh, 259 subscribers. Very happy with that. Thank you if you're a subscriber. So game week 17 isn't a wild card, but it's effectively a wild card. So you get to change as many players as you like and it doesn't cost you anything. But a couple of things to mention here. If you have a player and they've gone up in value since you bought them and you sell them, save your team and then change your mind and bring that player back, then you will lose the value that you saved up, the extra money. So you want to do all your transfers, make sure you're happy with your team and then save it. So I'm going to look through, we're going to step through the selection of players for you to choose from. And I'm aware this is going to possibly take you quite a while you may want to watch it all the way through and then go back and then make your choices because if you choose players as you go along, then you're not going to maybe be choosing the right midfielders and forwards. What I would suggest, one, you can choose anyone you want on this list. I would try and avoid choosing a keeper and defenders from the same team just so you're not doubling up. Because if you add, for example, two Newcastle people at the back and they let in a goal in the first minute, that's quite annoying. But... You can do whatever you want to do. This is just here to help you. So looking at the bankers, everyone has to buy these players. That's Ward, Bueno, Andreas and Haaland. Now for the goalkeeper, you want to select one of these. Edison from Man City, Pope, Ramsdale and Kepa Arizabalaga. I don't know how to say a surname. I've put the word Kepa there because everyone refers to him as Kepa, but if you look on the site, he's under A-R-R-I-Z. He's flagged as injured, but if he's injured, that's okay because Ward will come on. With Edison, he's the most likely to be keeping clean sheets. The downside of getting a Man City keeper is you can then only get two other Man City players on the field. But if you decide, for example, not to get Cancelo, then it's okay to get Edison. 
Uh, the same with Pope. If you get Pope and you end up getting Trippier, you've already used up two of your Newcastle slots. Same, of course, with Ramsdale. So go for any of these you want to. Absolutely fine. Just be careful who else you choose. In defence, you're going to choose one of these defenders. Cancelo, Trent, Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. I'm aware Liverpool haven't been great with clean sheets, but Trent and Robertson can both get assists. Surely they'll turn it around. So choose one of these three. Choose three of these defenders. Trippier, James, Walker, Gabriel, Shaw, Dallow, White, Castagna. Now, if the two Man United ones, Shaw and Dallow, it's possible they're going to get let in goals the next couple of games as they're going to be missing a couple of key defenders because of the World Cup. But the teams they're playing aren't particularly strong, so they may keep a clean sheet. And Dello and Shaw can both get up and get an assist, possibly even get a goal. All of these defenders are great. Choose any three, you'll be fine. Choose one of these midfielders. Salah, De Bruyne, Son, Fernandez, Sterling. I'm aware that Son, Fernandez and Sterling haven't been great this year so far, but they could be. Fernandez, now that Ronaldo's gone, might be very good because his role may change slightly. Son could turn it around at any point, as could Sterling. Chelsea have got some very nice fixtures coming up, including double game week. Salah's got excellent stats regarding shots on goal, assists, etc. De Bruyne's got loads of assists. So any of those five are great. If I had to choose, I'm not going to tell you who I choose because <laughs> it's got to be your team. You choose whoever you want. Choose one of these midfielders. Foden, Madison, Saka, Mount, Trossard. I'm aware some people don't like Trossard. Trossard is an incredibly good player. He's about the fourth or fifth highest scoring midfielder at the moment. There's no reason he can't keep that up. But any of these are fine. Mount's not been great. However, Chelsea have some nice games coming up and a double game week. So any of these should be fine. Choose one of these midfielders. Barnes, Martinelli, Rashford, Odegaard, Almiron. As you'll see, these midfielders are gradually getting cheaper. All five of these are great. Choose one of these midfielders. Billing, Bailey, Somerville. These will usually be on your bench, but they've all got a good chance of playing and they'll be picking up points sometimes. And you really want your three, four bench players to be players that are going to be getting points. Choose one of these forwards. Kane, Darwin, Tony. I'm aware that Tony's a lot cheaper than the other two, but don't be put off by his price. He's been very good. He could still be very good going forward. But if you can afford Darwin or Kane without crippling your team elsewhere, that's great. Do that. Choose one of these. Mitrovic, Martial, Solanke. So your bench, what we do every week, I go through this and I'll tell you who you need to put on your bench. And if we get the bench right, the other 11 players sort themselves out. So this week, put Ward on your bench. On your bench, you've got three slots. In the third slot, put either Somerville, Bailey or Billing, depending on which one you chose. In your second slot, put Bueno. And in your first slot, you want to put Andreas. Regarding captaincy, if you've seen my channel before... Obviously, I'm going to say, put the old mule hat on Harland. Here we go. I've got it going the other way this time. Put the mule hat on Harland. Regarding vice captain, if you bought Salah, make him your vice captain. If you didn't buy Salah, but you have Kane, make Kane your vice captain. If you have neither of those, but you had Darwin, Darwin's got a big floppy hat, give it to Darwin. If you have none of those three, but you bought Fernandez, make him your vice captain. If you have none of those four, then you will have Tony, make him your vice captain. And there we have it. You might want to rewind this now and set your team. Um, I can't guarantee you'll get top 5% globally, but I think there's a reasonably good chance that you will do. And so you'll do quite well in your mini league. I've played around with these um, players, the options here. I was going to show some sample teams, but then I thought, I know the people that are doing this, they want to be able to feel like they're picking their own team, so I've decided not to. But you can get some very, very good teams out of this, and it'd be all right. There are no real duffers there, as far as I'm concerned. As the weeks go by, if these players get too many bookings, or they're injured, or they're underperforming, I'll be giving you advice which players 
to transfer out and which players to transfer in. Hopefully that makes sense and I hope you manage to get the 5% if you follow this. Thanks for watching. Bye.